Bossix4 asks, what do you think Star Wars Land will be called? Let me tell you, it's going to be entirely Gungan themed, and it's going to be called Jar Jar Binks' Funtime Station. It's going to be a nightmare, and it's going to be real. Hi everybody and welcome to the Disney Q&A. This is the series in which you guys send me all sorts of Disney questions, whether it's about the movies or the history or the parks, and I try to give you all sorts of Disney answers, at least to the best of my ability. Uh, today we're going to kick off the episode by talking about answers from the last episode. I had to ask you guys, what sort of physical models of Disney buildings would you love to have in your home for collecting? <clears throat> And uh, there were a lot of great answers out there, and the two that I ended up picking were the two that were going after my own heart. You have both Jesus Reyes and you have Ragecraft, who both suggest Horizons, one of my favorite Disney attractions. It's been closed for a while now, uh, but I would love to have a little Horizons building to put on a shelf somewhere. Uh, that said, let's just jump right into questions. Our first question comes from IslanderFan80, who asks, Have you heard that Pizza Planet and Hollywood Studios will probably become a Muppet-themed pizza restaurant centered around Rizzo the Rat? What are your thoughts on the Muppets possibly having more of a presence in the parks? This is a great question. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it's been actually been confirmed through internal paperwork, but it is going to be a Muppets-themed pizza place. Uh, it's going to be quick service. It is going to be called Rizzo's Pizza or Pizza Rizzo or something like that. So, you know, all of those rumors seem to be spot on. And I love the idea. First off, I love the idea of getting uh, Pizza Planet out of there. It makes total sense, right? If they're building Toy Story Land on the other side of the park, it seems odd to have a Toy Story restaurant over in its own corner there. So they had to get rid of it and put something there. And you have, uh, you know, Muppets 3D over there. So, you know, it's nice that rather than looking for something new or putting something Star Wars related or something completely uh, unrelated to the Muppets there, they are expanding their Muppets presence a bit. Now, I don't know if that's indicative that we're going to be seeing a whole lot of expansion for the Muppets. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had those plans at the ready in case the movies that they had done over the past few years were like really big and brought back the Muppets in a big way. Uh, I'd imagine they probably did fine, but not that amazing. So I also, I wouldn't be surprised if like this is where it stops, but uh, I like it. I like the Muppets. You know, I, I like Rizzo because he's got sort of that New York cliche vibe about him and coming from New York. I like that, that idea of, you know, almost um, commemorating the streets of America almost in a weird way by like putting a New York thing themed restaurant there um, where Streets of America sort of used to be. Um, so I, I like the idea. I hope they they open it soon. I hope I get to check it out. I hear it's going to be something like a month, a uh, year to put together. So hopefully I'll, in a future trip, get to check it out. Our next question comes from Tiffany Hills Kohler, who asks, if Disney hired you as an Imagineer and told you to come up with an out-of-the-box idea for a ride-based hotel, what would you do? This is almost sort of like an Imagineering for Dummies sort of thing, but we don't do hotels over there, so I figured it'd be cool to cover here. There's two part, ride base and out of the box. Here's what I'm gonna go with. I love space, I love science fiction. Let's do a uh, spaceship, not spaceship Earth, although that could be really cool, a spaceship Earth hotel, where instead of each building being like a different sport, the way the all-stars are, or like a different movie genre, like all-star movies, what about a hotel where each building's a different era of of human history? So you have the Egyptian era, and you've got the prehistoric era, and you've got the Renaissance and Rome, and you've got all of these. That's actually pretty cool. It's maybe it's a little too close to pop century an idea, but what I was gonna go with was not spaceship Earth. I was gonna go with Mission Space and say, what if you did like a <clears throat> like a space station themed uh, hotel? I think that'd be a little out of the box. You have super sci-fi rooms, all super fancy. And, you know, you do like a true hotel. You know, there's hotel style, motel style. Hotel style is where, you know, when you exit your room, you're in a hallway in a building. And motel style, you exit your room and you're outside. So think of like Port Orleans and the All-Stars as motel style. Think of like the contemporary as a hotel style. Um, if you did a hotel style one where like you're in a room and then you walk into the hallway and it's like a space station, that'd be super cool. If you want to go the next step further, make like an internal bus station. So like you could just, once you like pull in in the bus, you're inside the whole time and you make the windows look like you're in outer space and it'd be very, very immersive. Probably not for everybody who wants to enjoy the like summer sun in Florida, but 
you know, you asked for out of the box, so that's out of the box. And that's going to actually be this week's question. So for you all, I would want to know what what ride-based hotel would you want to see? What would it be like? What would it be themed for? What ride would it be based on? Let me know in the comments below. I'll pick out a handful of the ones I like, and I'll feature them in the next episode. Our next question comes from Eric Gregarius, who asks, Will the water parks be closing in September? The answer to this is yes and no, Eric. They will be closing this year, and they will be closing for an extensive amount of time for refurbishment, but it won't be in September. So this information is all off of touringplans.com, and it is all subject to change because that's how plans work. But as of now, the way it's going to work is Blizzard Beach is going to close on October 23rd, and it will stay closed until December 25th. Now, on December 25th, when it reopens, Typhoon Lagoon will be closing, and then that will reopen on, I think it's March 12th. Um, they're both, as far as I can see into it, they're closing for just refurbishments and sort of upkeep. It doesn't look like they're doing anything wildly different with the parks. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be anything new to check out when they do reopen. But uh, yeah, they're using the winter the winter months to do that. And they're being smart about doing one at a time. So for those, you know, maybe from up north who can deal with a Florida winter and still want to go in the water, like the, there'll still be a park available for them to go to. Our next question comes from Beefish Alex Imagineering, and this is a good one. With the opening of Shanghai Disneyland and attractions such as Roaring Rapids, Bob Iger's streak of no purely original attractions is broken. Do you think after the planned projects have been built, such as Star Wars, Pandora, Toy Story, etc., that there will be an increased presence of original attractions in the parks, or do you think that from a business standpoint, cross-promotion is more successful? So... Just to throw this out there, and I haven't looked into like a full list of attractions, but when I um, highlight the fact that Bob Iger hasn't put out like an original IP attraction since he took office as CEO, um, that is specifically for the U.S. parks. I do believe there might have been one or two attractions earlier on that uh, came out and uh, were built while he was CEO. So, you know, it's not a purely around the world sort of thing. But here in the States, you know, from everything I've checked and nobody said differently so far. So, you know, I could be completely wrong, but I can't find that information. Um, there hasn't been an original ride in Disneyland or Disney World since Iger became CEO. Now, some people will point to Expedition Everest. However, that was greenlit under Michael Eisner. I think that's sort of a special case because the plans were made and everything was set in motion while Eisner was still uh, the CEO. But I haven't been able to find any like original, meaning not based on a movie, not based on a previous property or ride, not crossing over with anything, just like something completely new, like a Haunted Mansion or a Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, but yeah, over in Shanghai, there have been some original ideas. And um, honestly, maybe it sounds pessimistic, but I don't think that means we're going to start to see original stuff here in the States. For one, you got to remember Star Wars. Well, OK, maybe the answer could be yes, but if for different reasons, right? Because you're saying after the plan projects, which includes Star Wars Land, Toy Story Land and like Pandora. But you got to remember, those are going to be a couple of years out. And Iger is expected within a year or two to step down as CEO. So, yeah, it is entirely possible that by the time those projects are done and somebody else's CEO of Disney, that we will start to see original stuff. Uh, that depends on who takes the seat. That depends on how they want to run the company. And that is such a big what if. I think it's a little unfair to try and make that guess. Um, you know, I think it's it's uh, in, you could go either way. You could have somebody who's takes in that seat and they want to set themselves apart from Bob Iger. And that means doing things completely differently and still trying to keep the company fresh. And that could very well include original rides. However, you could also have a CEO take over who sees what Bob Iger did and thinks this is what worked. This worked well. Let's keep doing that. And then in that case, you might not see some original stuff. I mean, there's no doubt that the cross promotional stuff is successful. It does work. Um, the real question is, is that the only way to go about it? Think of something like Pirates of the Caribbean. That is a trilogy of films or four films going on five films now that are highly successful and they're based on a completely original ride idea. They tried with the Haunted Mansion. Didn't work out so well. They might be trying again with the Haunted Mansion. Hopefully it does a little better. But, you know, there is value in creating original properties because those could be the next big thing. Uh, so it's definitely important. It's definitely something I hope that they do, but it's hard to tell if it's ever going to happen. And then finally, our last question for this week, and the one I've been putting off because I still don't fully know what the answer is, but Camlax1081 asks, what Disney movie do you think most deserves a ride, and what would the ride be like? 
Now I'm going to save like the what would the ride be like part because that seems more like an Imagineering for Dummies type topic, which is a series Christine and I do where we sort of come up with ride ideas. But as for like what Disney movie, my, my first thought was like what animated films, which recent ones haven't gotten, you know, any treatment, whether it's a, you know, Zootopia or maybe an upcoming Moana or something like that. But, you know, I don't I don't know if that necessarily needs to have a ride. And then I thought the classics and the thing is with the classics, if it doesn't have a ride already, does it really deserve one? If something like a Robin Hood, which is considered a classic and a lot of people love, isn't popular right now enough to warrant a ride, should it really have one? Does it deserve it? So I thought, you know what, how about for fun, we go in a completely different direction. I don't think this is a real answer. I don't think I really believe these movies require their own rides. I don't think they're popular enough, or maybe they will be. But what if we made a couple of rides based on some Disney Channel original movies from like the late 90s, early 2000s? I'm talking about a Brink ride. I'm talking about a Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century ride. Maybe, you know, like a Hocus Pocus ride if you want to get into like a Halloween or scary themed like, well, Hocus Pocus was a theater, theatrical. But you know what I'm getting at. Like, some of these 90s nostalgic movies. Um, I know recently to celebrate um, one of the anniversaries, they had played, like, all of the Disney Channel original motion picture films in a row. And there were a ton. I remember growing up with these. You know, this was... Um, a great uh, endeavor by Michael Eisner. You got to remember, Michael Eisner, he got to start in television and then moved into movies and then became CEO of Disney. And so one of the things that he popularized when he was younger was the idea of made-for-TV movies and doing them extremely cheap and making them like these big draw events. And that's eventually what he ended up doing with the Disney Channel. And it was highly successful. I mean... Think, think back to your favorite Disney Channel original movie. Like, there were so many great ones out there, and there was a lot of variety, and they were done on the cheap, and it just worked. Um, maybe maybe a ride that pays homage to some of those, some of the best of those. I would go with Brink or Xenon. Those were honestly my two favorite Disney Channel original movies. Uh, anyway, I want to thank you all for watching. I'm going to throw another question out there. What was your favorite Disney Channel original movie? So you can either answer that or you can answer uh, the other question, which is what would your uh, ride-based hotel be? What's, what's that idea? I'll pick some of the greater answers and I'll feature them in the next episode. If you have questions you would like to ask for the series, feel free to leave them in the comments below or you can let me know on Twitter. I'm at Rob Plays. I want to thank you all for watching. If you want to see more Disney videos like this, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. I do three a week, so they'll just go right to your little inbox and you'll get to enjoy them. Um, whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. And I hope to see you all next time for the next Disney Q&A. Bye, everybody. All right, so today we're going to be talking about a couple of different tips, and we're going to kick it off with Christine's tip, which uh, involves, I guess, fireworks and explosives. How do we make explosives, Christine? Um, that I am not at liberty to say. <laughs>